Our scripture today comes to us from the Gospel of John. Hear these words from the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana, in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So often in our world we find out, we see, it seems as though things oftentimes can't be exactly right. Whether we got a kink in our back or a family that's out of line, uh, sore places in our work, just, just empty places in our faith. Believe it or not, they're just a lot of things in our life that aren't exactly right. I remember one time when Dayton, my oldest, was about 15 or 16, going through that uh, testosterone poisoning that so many young men go through. Um, he was having one of his, his bad days, and I, I think I've shared the story, and I, I suggested that we go to the golf range and hit some golf balls. And uh, Tina went, Sloan went, and they said, well, whatever. Y'all seen this? Whatever. Whatever, Dad. So he got in there, and he sat in the car for a while. Uh, finally, he got out, and he started, you know, out there swinging, loosening it up. And he needed a few balls. They'd go this way. They'd go that way. Just, you know. And I didn't act like I wasn't paying attention. But after a while, he, he looked at me and says, Well, I said, Well, what? Are you going to help me or not? I went, me? You want me to get over here? So I went over there and, and he stood up and I said, why don't you, let me see what you're doing. So he did. I said, well, do this and do that and, and, that, and I swing real easy and he, he reared back and went, and went straight up, just whew, best shot ever. Landed. He stood there and looked at it for a couple of minutes, turned on me and he says, you know, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Isn't that the way that we are? I mean, we know that we have problems, situations, those things that we like to change in our, in our life, but, but all, so often we're not looking for advice. We're not looking for people to share. We, we just kind of are happy where we are, even though things aren't right. We get this nice whatever kind of attitude. You know, oftentimes we, we get that way because we feel as though... Uh, the things that we're facing are, are too big for us to change. Or we, we get that way because we, we find ourselves in a place where we don't want to change because it'll mean that we have to do something we don't want to do. We get a, a whatever attitude oftentimes because we, we don't think that we have the ability or the stamina to make a difference. In your bulletin, you'll find a points to ponder, and this is the first time, first one. Believe it or not, it is the little things that we do in our lives that, that make us stronger. It's the little things in our lives that, that prepare us to tackle big things. It's the little things in our lives that we do that, that make the world line up in the way in which we know it ought to line. But again, so often we're... Whatever. You know, as I think of the, the story in the Bible that Wendy just read, I find myself wondering about the servants. You know, for them, they were used to being told what to do. 
They were servants. Go and do this. And so when Mary, Jesus' mom, came up and says, do whatever, whatever Jesus said, I'm sure it didn't faze them at all. But you have to admit, knowing the situation that it was, knowing that there was no more wine, knowing a family was in a bind, having Jesus come to them and say, hey, you see those six jars over there? Fill them up with water. Now, I bet that got the attention of those servants. Do what? You have to wonder what was going through their mind. I mean, when Jesus turned, they go, What's he doing? But being who they were and understanding their place in this family, they did it. You know, as I read this story, I found myself wondering, when did the wine get changed? Was it when they poured it in the, in the jars? Or maybe when the servants dipped it out? Or maybe it was in the master of the banquet tasting it. It had to happen somewhere along, but, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter when it happened. It did. And what caused it to happen is there were those people around that were willing to do whatever it took. Whatever it took to make a difference. Isn't it funny that, that faithfulness oftentimes isn't complicated? But that does not mean that it's not difficult. Right? I mean, as children, when we raise them, we, we, we give them a whatever attitude. You're going to do whatever I tell you, boy. I'm going to put you in a corner or whatever you do. And as children, we accept that, that role. And, and when our parents or our teacher, most of the time when they tell us what to do, we, we say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, yes, whatever it is we say, and we respond. And then through the little things in our life, multiplication tables, spelling bees, homework, we grow. But then something happens when we get older, right? As we get older, it's harder and harder for us to, to really listen to those who might have advice for us. We're less willing to follow directions. I don't know if it's because we have more fear, more ego, more hard-headedness, but, but something about us as we go older allows us to, to not listen to those who, who might have suggestions for us. I kind of have to wonder if that's why in, in Matthew 22, Jesus says, you know, unless you become like a child, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, as we get older, we, we get so, so set, so, so comfortable, so, so secure in where we are. We don't like wandering beyond where we, where we have been. It dawned on me as I was preparing for this. You know why even the most elite of athletes have coaches? They have them in order to push them beyond where they would go on their own. You know, as I, I think of the story of this family that, that had just, just an ordinary, wonderful event in, in the life and the journey of, of their time together. And as they were there, they, they had a wedding come up that a uh, complication happened and, and Jesus was there. Willing to, to, to use the faithfulness of uh, a servant to turn a, a hardship, a, a tragedy, a, a 
problem into something that was far more than it ever could have been. You know, as I, I think of that wedding, I, I find myself wondering as to the things that we go through. The problems that, that we face each and every day. Those parts of our world that, that are out of kilter. Whether we're talking about the, the great stagnation of our government. Democrat, Republican. Conservative, liberal. You know, we're so secure in who we are that we never step forward to allow God to use us to break down the walls between us so that something might be done. As I think about our world and all the things that have gone on in the NFL and they're happening in the media, those people that, that still have those prejudices, those feelings about women, about races, all those things that, that cause this world to be just a little off kilter and, and never able to get exactly where God wants it to be. As I think about families... Husbands and wives struggling to, to make relationships work. Brothers and sisters at odds with other brothers and sisters because of past events. I mean, many would say these are just mundane, everyday things, but in all honesty, it's in those places that God wants to work. If just a few of us would step up as servants, followers of Christ Jesus and say, Here I am, Lord. I'll do whatever. You know, it's funny. We can be as dead right as we can be dead wrong. And dead right still does not lead to any kind of life within the worlds that we live. You know, as we think of the compass and how we find our way, I, I heard someone say that, you know, one of the troubles in, in, in our world is, is that much of the church has become teacup Christians. And I know that's not us, but it gives me a great, great thought on that. Those, those followers of Christ that are, that are so fragile that, that they're good to look at, but, but really not any good for everyday use. You see, when we become teacup Christians, we, we don't lose our salvation, but, but we can lose a good bit of our usability. Our willingness to, to step forward and say, Lord, I know that I need to forgive so-and-so for what he did to me, but I can't do it. Or Lord, I know that you're calling me to, to, to reach out to someone in my neighborhood that is yet to really find a church, but I'm uncomfortable. Lord, I know that there are those youth that, that are in and around our neighborhood that, that could do with, with help and, and support. And it's in those places that we're, we're called to be used. It's in those places that, that Christ, by His power and our availability, changes the most plain basic things of our life into amazing gifts, blessings, and opportunities. You know, when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, it was easy. He said, all the, all the, all the laws, all, all, all the prophets hang on two things. Love God first. With all your heart, soul, and mind. And then the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. John Wesley, our, the founder of the, the, of the Methodist movement, he, he took what Jesus said and, and put it into some practical other terms. Not trying to change it, not trying to make it better, but just to, to give it 
and came up with three general rules. And I think this would be great for us to hear. You know, the first thing that we can do to be faithful to God is, number one, do no harm. And as I think about my life, I wonder about those things that I might need to step back from, those habits, those situations, those attitudes, those things that I cling to, that I might step back so that my harm might fall and God might work in that situation. In doing good, I, I listen for those times that, that God is calling me into a place or an area that I, I'm not yet really comfortable with. The third one is, is do no harm, do good, and the third is to keep falling in love with God. And that third one comes from our willingness to, to truly sell out to Christ, like we talked about last week. I haven't said it enough. But knowing what's in this book is important. Spending time in prayer is important. Finding a small group that you can walk with a, along your journey is, is important. You see, in all of those things, as we, we open ourselves up to whatever God is saying, miracles happen in our lives, but even more important than that, in the lives of those around us. You know, for many, I'm sure that it's less than noteworthy that, that Jesus most often chose to, to do great things to ordinary people. The servants in this story. The boy with the loaves and the fish in another. I truly believe that God is calling us as a church, as individuals, to, to really be available for, for great things to happen. The question is, 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 is what is Jesus asking of you? It's through us that, that Christ does the most amazing of things. And I just have to believe that, that as we are faithful, as we're obedient, miracles will happen. Let's pray. Most holy and precious God, we thank you so much for the many ways that you bless us. Lord, in all honesty, I... It's easy for us to find ourselves cruising through life, comfortable, secure. It's such a pace as we don't hear your voice, that still quiet voice that calls to us to, to make ourselves available. today as we come to this table as we spend time with you at our seats I pray that your Holy Spirit would fall in such a way as that we might be open to hear you to respond or to be a part of what you want to do Lord, we love you.
know that you can do all things. Use us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.